I don't think we were living in a fool's paradise in 2007. There were fool's paradise elements in it, but I don't think it was basically a fool's paradise. And we've got to get back there as quickly as possible, avoiding the bubbles that uh, really arose because we allowed finance um, to be almost completely unregulated. You make the intellectual case for it, and then you hope for some popular support. You mobilize popular support. You have to make the case. The case has to be persuasive, it's got to be soundly based, and then you've got to get the political leaders to take it up. Um, and, and then, I, at, so, at some point, uh, there will be a revolt against austerity anyway, because it's not working. If it were working, if in fact its promises were being fulfilled, then it would be the right theory. If, in fact, austerity was making economies grow, um, then it would be fine. I, I'd, 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 say, I'd say, first, first person say, I was completely wrong. But we've now had it for two and a half years. And in that time, Europe hasn't grown. It, in fact, it's been completely flat, um, taken as a whole. And Britain hasn't grown. And in fact, it's started to shrink. We've now had the second of our double dip recessions about to be announced. So it's, it's the wrong policy. So how can we change it? Well, first of all, we get out of the hole. Then we actually start thinking about our longer term economic and social arrangements. We obviously have to think about the banking system and actually reduce its weight in our economic life and make it the servant of the people rather than the master. Um, we, we, we have to think about um, the, 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 what we do about inequality and the growth of inequality. Um, we have to start doing some of the things that were started in some one or two cases, like giving people a citizen's income. I mean, there were the first steps towards doing that. Um, but they were all abandoned when, when, we, when we got into the crisis situation. We've really got to think about work sharing, um, because at the moment, the way we're organizing things, there is a sort of uh, minority, a very large minority, sure. It may even be a majority uh, in sort of more or less regular employment. And a huge tale of people have part-time jobs, who have intermittent jobs, or minimum wage jobs. We're creating a servant population again, which we thought that we'd, we'd got over um, in, 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 in the early 20th century. Well-off people now have lots of servants. They're not called servants. They're, they're given fancy titles so that they don't feel that they're servants any longer. But they are actually a service class. Everyone, you know, they're masses of drivers now. Uh, who weren't drivers 10 or 15 years ago, they were, doing, they were doing jobs that gave them a lot more satisfaction than being drivers. But this is a new servant class. They're chauffeurs. Uh, thousands and thousands of them springing up in all the, all, all the major cities of the West. That's the only jobs they can find. They work 60 hours a week. We're recreating this slowly. Under our own eyes, we're recreating the very unequal conditions of the earlier part of the last century. That's wrong. That is completely a retreat from where we should be going.